doing the geography videos was fun, this was even better. Not only because I love Tolkien's universe, but because some of the tests were really, some of the questions were really, really tough. I have to improve the audio quality because I think that after so many months of not recording anything, I have forgotten how to do the audio editing part. I am trying different settings for the microphone, different settings for, for the Audacity, which is the recording software that I use. Um, but it's getting there, I think. And that's it for now. I hope that you enjoy the video and especially I hope you get to play as I play the way I intended it. And that's it. Thanks for clicking. I have two Tolkien quizzes. One of them is in How Stuff Works play and one is the book rags. I have found more but they were either too basic or maybe too short, so I narrow it down to these two. And we are going to start with this one, let's say. Um, about this quiz, the Silmarillion details the rich background of the more well-known tales The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings for dedicated Tolkien fans. How much do you know about the earlier ages of Middle-earth? Take this quiz to find out. Okay, before they were hobbits, the Silmarillion quiz. I thought it was... I thought it was going to be about the whole um, Tolkien um, universe, but... I think I'm confident in my memory. Scroll to start the quiz, okay. Um, the Silmarillion is named after what? The Silmarils, elven gems of great power, Silmarilor, the first lord of Beleriand, the Silmarillion, a book written in the first age of and handed down through the kings of Númenor. Um, the Silmarils, Selvan gems of great power, should be, okay, yes. The first part of the Silmarillion, Ainulindale, is Tolkien's version of what type of mythological story? Creation myth, story of the great flood, mortal ascending to good godhood. Um, it's the creation myth. Ainulindale describes the creation of the universe, Arda, where Middle Earth is found, and all the beings that populate it. Yes. What is the name of the divine being who existed before the creation of the universe? Ea. Eru Ilúvatar or Melkor? And it's Eru Ilúvatar. Correct. Uh, sometimes known as either uh, name separately, sometimes both names combined, is uh, somewhat like Odin and somewhat like the Christian God. Both majors, major inspirations for Tolkien. Yes, it is. The Ainur are divine beings for, born from what? The mixing of the void and the light, Ilúvatar's thoughts and ideas, the death throes of the previous incarnation of the universe. I would have said um, Ilúvatar's music because they, in the first chapter, they always talk about the, the, the music and the, um, the melodies that they create. Oh, second best thing should be Ilúvatar's thought and, thoughts and ideas, because, let's see, okay, yes, the Ainur are born from Ilúvatar's thoughts, which is very Odin-like. I don't know, maybe. Um, next, how do the Ainur create the universe? They mold it from the primeval clay, they sing a song together, the various elements of the universe, stars, planets, etc., are the offspring of the Ainur. This is what I was saying before. They sing a song together. Correct. The universe is created from the song of the Ainur, a complex harmony di directed by Ilúvatar. Exactly. Next question. 
how does how does Melkor, the most powerful Ainur, work to disrupt the creation of the universe? He lies to the other Ainur about Ilúvatar's plan for the song. He sings loud, discordant music. He murders his brother Manue, uh, the primary singer of the singer of the song. I think it's the second one because I remember that that they they talk about the the Melkor's discordance from the very beginning, but uh, I think it has to be the second one. Yes, Melkor keeps disrupting the song, forcing Ilúvatar to begin to begin it again, uh, to begin it again with a new, more powerful theme. Yes. Who are the children of Ilúvatar? The Valar and the Maya, Melkor and Mangue, men and elves. Um. These are the first to be created, and these are between these first groups. But I, children, I think it refers to men and elves. Yes, men and elves are born as the result of the third musical theme composed by Ilu- by Ilúvatar. The Ainur then create Arda, the world where all of Tolkien's other tales take place. Middle-earth is just part of that world. Melkor wants to rule Arda. What happens to him after the Ainur go to Arda? Hmm. He disguises himself as a mortal on Arda. The, o- the other Ainur invade his fortress and imprison him in the halls of Mandos. He rebels reveals himself to men and begins to corrupt them. What happens to him after the Ainur go to Arda? Well, no, I don't think it's the first one and I don't... This happens, but I don't know if that could count. No, it has to be the, the middle one, the second one. Melkor is imprisoned in the halls of Mandos, so he doesn't corrupt the elves. The Vala Cuenta section of the Silmarillion describes the Valar, powerful Ainur who come to live on Arda, sort of like Greek gods and goddesses. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty much how many Valar are there. 1477, 4. It's not four, wait, no, it's not four, and I don't think it's 77. I th- yeah, I think it's 14, because if I remember correctly, they were separated in, in two groups of seven, so it should be 14, yes. There are 14 Valar plus Melkor, who is no longer, longer considered a Valar due to his evil deeds. Next one. The Valar are the more powerful Ainur of Arda. What are the lesser Ainur called? Uh, Vesta, Olorin, Meyer. I don't remember if Vesta meant anything. Olorin, it's the, if I remember correctly, it's the, um, or, the original name of uh, Gandalf. Um, and it has to be uh, it's the Meyer. The Meyer are in some ways like pagan nature spirits, though some of them, Sauron, Gandalf, Melian, take a more specific a specific form and play greater roles in the events of Arda. Next one. Each Maya is attached to a more powerful Valar. Which one is Sauron attached to? He started, um, wait, let's read it first. Uh, Aule Fenturi Tulkas. It's Aule. The, um, oh, what was the name? The, the forge uh, god. 
and I think it he was the 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 one that created the dwarfs. Yeah, Aula the Smith is known for intervention uh, for invention and crafting, which explains Sauron's skills in directing the crafting of the Rings of Power, and his own crafting of the One Ring. Yep. Yeah. Who awakened at Quivienen? Melkor, the Elves, Sauron. And it's the Elves. Yes, the Elves awaken at Quivienen in Middle-earth. What is the continent where the Valar live, which the Elves are invited to? Svagos, Beleriand, Aman. And it's Aman. Because I don't think Svagos exists in Tolkien's world. I think it's a trick question. And Beleriand, it's uh, a part of what then became the um, or um, the Middle Middle Earth, like the most uh, far western uh, point. Wait, did I? Oh, I didn't. That's it. Among it's the domain of the Valar. They created a sort of holy land called Valinor there. Yes. Okay. So, how does Melkor create the Balrogs? He tricks Iluvatar into creating them for him. He grows them from the ground, uh, watered with the blood of elves. They are fallen mire that he tempts into joining him. Um, has to be the third one. This doesn't happen, and I'm pretty sure that this doesn't happen, so the Valrogs, which I think at the very beginning they were called Varalaukar, yeah, they are falling mire, they are the same level of, uh, they are the same level of power or, or of being or whatever as uh, Gandalf, Saruman and Sauron. Oh, yeah. Okay, Balrogs are fallen, corrupt and mire. Yes. Who creates the Silmarils? Feanor, Fingolfin, Ungoliant. Um, Ungoliant, it's the um, giant spider at the beginning of the story. Uh, Fingolfin, it's uh, one of the younger brothers of Feanor. And it's, uh, it's Feanor. Feanor is the song of the first king of the Noldor elves. Why are the Silmarils so powerful? Feanor infuses them with light from the two divine trees that light Valinor. Feanor crafts them in a magical cave. Feanor is aided in their construction by the finest dwarven smiths. So he's the first one. And if I remember correctly, the trees were called Laureling and Telperion. It's this one. After Melkor and Ungolian destroys the two trees, the Silmarils are the only remnant of their light left in Arda. Yes. What does Melkor do after destroying the trees? Uses their power to create a race of servants and soldiers, the orcs. Creates his own realm. Shrouded in shadow, which would later be known as Mordor, kills Feanor's father and steals the Silmarils. Um, why well, uses that? No, I don't think that's true. He creates his own realm, but it it's not later known as Mordor because it's some um, it's in 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 the other corner of the. Middle Earth. Does he kill Feanor's father? I guess it's this one because I know he steals the, the Silmarils, but Melkor, Melkor kills Feanor's father and returns to his fortress with the Silmarils, which he places in his iron crown. Okay, had to be that one. Next one. The true cost of Melkor's theft is that it steers pride, greed and jealousy and leads someone to commit a terrible betrayal. Who is it? Um, Feanor, the lesser Ma Maiar, Ungoliant. 
um, I think it's referring to the Feanors, um, how do you say it? Um, Feanor's pact, um, they, they make a pact to recuperate, to recover the, um, Silmarils, um, by any means necessary, and they became, I guess, corrupt, has to be Feanor. Yeah, Fëanor blames the Valor for his for his father's death. He covets the Silmaril so much he convinces his fellow Noldor to leave a man for Middle Earth, killing some of his fellow elves in the process. Yes, that's it. Ah, oath of Fëanor. It's called oath. Yes, pack. I was saying pact. No, it's oath. What is the oath of Fëanor? Feanor's declaration that he will hunt and even kill anyone who keeps the Silmarils from him, whether it's Melkor, the Valor, or other, other elves. Melkor's declaration that he will hunt and kill Feanor and all his children. The Valor's declaration that Feanor will never set foot in Valinor ever again. And it has to be the first one. Feanor swears that nothing will stop him from reclaiming the Silmarils, a promise that would have tragic consequences. Exactly. After he returns to Middle-earth, what is Melkor's name changed to? Gogmoth, Morgoth, Morig. I don't think Morig exists, or at least in Tolkien's uh, universe. And I don't think it's Go Gog Moth, it's Goth Moth, which is the captain of the um, Balrogs, and he gets killed by uh, Ecthelion, and he was another prince of the Noldor, I think, and it's Morgoth. Melkor is known as Morgoth after he steals the Silmarils, yes. Um, Melian is a Maya who marries an elf and rules the elven kingdom of Doriath. What is the girdle of Melian? A magic ring of mists that prevents anyone from entering Doriath uninvited. A magic garment that allows Melian to maintain a physical form. A rope that Melian uses to bind prisoners and force them to speak truthfully. If I remember correctly, it has to be the first one. Very few beings are able to pass through the misty barrier of the girdle of Melian without permission from her or her husband, Thingol. Mm -hmm. Who leaves permanent scars on Morgoth's face? Thorondor, king of the eagles, Glauron the dragon, Ecthelion the elven hero. Yeah, that's the 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 Ecthelion that I was um, talking about here. Um, but no, uh, it's uh, th it has to be Thorondor, king of the eagles. Yeah, Thorondor Thorondor flies into battle and leaves indelible scars on Morgoth's face during the Drag Dagor Bragolag. Let's go for the next one. The Near Nath Arnoediath is a major battle in which Morgoth uh, finally gains control over much of northern Beleriand. What does Near Nath Arnoediath translate to? The Mountains of Death, the Battle of Unnumbered Tears, the Battle of the Shattered Heavens. Um, it's the... F um, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it's... Mm, no, it has to be the, the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. Yes. The battle is marked by horrendous casualties and terrible betrayals and is known as the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. Although I think this one also exists. The Battle of Shattered Heavens. I'm pretty sure it, is, it exists too. When the mortal man Beren enters Doriath, whom does he fall in love with? Galadriel, Luthien, daughter of Melian and Thingol, a nameless Maya he sees dancing in the forest. Um, it's uh, a 
it's Luthien, the the history of um, the the story of Beren and Luthien. Uh, Beren uh, Beren falls in love with Luthien, but Thingol doesn't want her to marry a mortal. Mm -hmm. uh, and there we go. What is Thingol's condition for allowing the marriage? Beren must steal one of the Silmarils from Morgoth. Beren must slay the dragon Glaurum. Beren must forge new Silmarils. And it's the first one. Beren must steal one of the Silmarils from Morgoth. Thingol asks that Beren retrieve a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown, believing this to be an impossible task. How does Beren accomplish the task? Beren challenges Morgoth to one-on-one -on -one combat on the battle plane and defeats Morgoth by chopping off his foot. Luthien casts a spell that put Morgoth to sleep, allowing Beren to pry a Silmaril from the crown. Beren bribes one of Morgoth's subjects into switching one of the Silmarils with a fake. Second one. Luthien casts a spell that put Morgoth to sleep, allowing Beren to pry a Silmaril from the crown. Beren is only able to get the Silmaril with Luthien's help, but he gets greedy and wakes up Morgoth, trying to get the other two. What happens to Beren's Silmaril? Um, it's shattered by a blow from Morgoth's mace. It's lost in Glaurum's horde. It's ingested along with Beren's hand by the greatest werewolf in the universe. And it's the third one. I don't remember the name of Karkaroth or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, the werewolf, the werewolf Karkaroth. Uh, it's it. Uh, but Thingol lets Beren and Luthien get married anyway. Although Beren dies and Luthien has him restored to life, but becomes mortal herself. It's all very tragic. It is. I I, I remember. Uh, um the story and it's uh, one of my favorites from one of my favorites from the book what is the name of the hidden elven city that finally falls uh, to Morgoth but only after yet another betrayal from uh, within Artgalen, Delenor and Gondolin I don't recognize these two uh, names but still it's uh, Gondolin the fall of Gondolin is one of Tolkien's most epic, though tragic, battles. What do Earendil and Elwyn do with Beren's Silmaril years later? They set it in a crown that becomes a symbol of, symbol of elven power until the, thir until the Third Age. They take it back to Valinor to convince the Valar to help them defeat Morgoth. They hide it away jealously and are dry, driven mad. Has to be the first one. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have phrased it this way, but it's the it's the first uh, the first one because I think they the Silmaril actually becomes a star, right? I don't remember that part, but yeah, okay. Arendil and Elwin uh, sail to Valinor and ask the Valar to go to war, uh, to war against Morgoth with them. Oh, and and it's the second to last. Wow. The resulting war, known as the War of Wrath, leads to Morgoth's defeat, but has what other consequence? Hmm. The removal of a ma uh, of a man from Arda. The Gradual fading of the elves, the utter destruction of a huge portion of the Middle Earth, which is lost beneath the ocean. It's the third one, uh, uh, and it's Beleriand, what uh, the part that um, disappears. If I, I'm pretty sure. Correct answer. Yes, a lot of Middle Earth is obliterated by the war because the Valar are so powerful. The Valar basically look around and say, "Whoa." We will never get involved uh, like this again. This was a bad idea. How do you stack up? You score 97%, average score 92. 
You are a true expert. You got 29 correct out of uh, 30. You scored better than 46% of quiz takers. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Let's do the next one. Take our free The Silmarillion quiz below with 25 multiple choice questions that help you test your knowledge. Determine with which chapters, themes and styles you already know and what you need to study for your upcoming essay, midterm or final exam. Take the free quiz now. I don't think I'm going to have a upcoming essays, midterms or final exams about Tolkien, but question Number one. What is the name of the king that joins Beren to search for Morgoth? From Quenta Silmarillion, the history of the Silmarils, chapter 19. Fingon, Thingol, Finwe, Felagund. Mm, no, it's Finrod Felagund, but I didn't... Is it Felagund the name? I have to wait... I have to wait until I finish to know if I... right? Yeah, well... it's okay. Who forms the last alliance in the book? From the Rings of Power and the Third Age. The last alliance is... Um, Elendil and Gilgalad? I know it's Gilgalad, but... Elendil and Gilgalad, Maegling and Felagund, Turing and Thingol, Miriel and Indis has to be um, Gilgalad and someone else. Elendil, was it Elendil, the Numenorean king with the two kids that... Isildur was the... pretty sure. Okay, number three. Who creates one ring to rule others in the book? Manwe, Morgoth, Sauron, Ulmo. Well, that's pretty obvious, it's Sauron. What is the title of chapter 11? From Quenta Silmarillion, the history of Silmarils, chapter 11 of the Sun and Moon and the Hiding of Valiron, chapter 2 of Men. And what's the point of asking what's the title of chapter 11 if you're putting the answer in this small like uh, context uh, where or small explanation of Thingol and Melian of the Sun and Moon and the Hiding of Valimonor well, it has to be that one well okay uh, number five who guards Morgoth in the timeless void hmm who's the hmm uh, it's not Sauron. It cannot. I don't think it can be Ulmo because it, Ulmo was the goddess of the seas and the, or the water. I, I, I guess it's uh, like all kind of kinds of water. Yavanna was the goddess of what? Nature, I think. Yeah, it was nature. And the Arendil, I guess it's the Arendil. Because they 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 let them let him s let sail um, with uh, some kind of boat that starts flying, and I guess it's the Aaron. We will see. Number six: Who makes the rings discussed in the last part of the book? Um. Wait, who makes the rings? Isn't that Celebrimbor? The dwarves, the Avari, the elves, the Valar. It's Celebrimbor in Eregion's uh, forge, but... And Celebrimbor is an elf, but also... I'm pretty sure the Avari are a, um, a group inside the, the elf race, so... Is it the Avar? No, because they are not. They were Noldor um, 
smiths that created the Cleverimbor was a Noldor. So it's the elves, I guess. It's not the dwarves, it's not the Valar. Number seven. What is the name of King Thingol and Melian's first child? Um, Tulkas, Lutmen, Elendil, Fingolfing. Tulkas is a Val. Um, yeah, Tulkas is a Valar. Lutmen, I don't know. Elendil, Fingolfing, Fingolfing. It's impossible. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Lutmen because Elendil. Ellen did some kind of character and I think it was the what we saw in the previous um, set of questions one of the um, characters that created the last alliance so it, it's Lutman Luthien and Lutman are the kids from Art Thingol and Melian's kids I guess number eight how many ships does Turgon have made by Kirdan to send messengers to Valar Seven, nine, five, three. How many ships does Turgum have made by Kirdan to send messengers to Valor? I have no idea. How many ships? I'm going to say three just because, I don't know, let's improvise and let's say three. Number 9. Who dies much easier in the battle against Melkor in chapter 12? Who dies much easier? I don't really know what they mean by that. I mean, orcs are very weak, but dwarfs, elves and men. I truly don't know what they mean is much easier in the battle against Melkor in chapter 12. No idea. I guess I would say orcs because they are, they are weak, weaker. I don't know. Let's see at the um, ending of the um, test. 10. Who defeats the orcs in chapter 14? The Avari, Fingol and Maedro, Fingolfing and Maedros, Manwe and Ulmo, Tulkas and Turin, who defeats the orcs in chapter 14. Who defeats the orcs in chapter 14? The Avari, Fingolfing and Maedros, Manwe and Ulmo, Tulkas and Turin. No idea. No idea. Um, Tulkas and Turin, Manwe and Ulmo. Oof. Fingolfinger and Maedros? I don't know, I don't remember that part of, of the Return of the Nolder and Chapter 14 of Beleriand and, it, and its Realms. I'm just going to make a really wild guess. It's not, it's not, not, not even a guess, it's just like I have to click something and I'm going to say Fingolfinger. But Fingolfinger. Nah, the Avari, I don't know. The Avari. Number 11. Who travels to Gondolin and promises Turgon not to reveal its location when they leave? Maeglin and Maier, Hurin and Hur, Elendil and Earendil, Turgon and Turin. I should remember that. That's something that I should remember. Who travels to Gondolin? Hmm. Tur hmm. Turin Turambar. I don't really know. Elen Elen Ayarendil, no. Maeglin and Mayar. Mayar is not a person, it's like a race of. like the, the, the Mayar, but. Hurin and Hur? I'm going to say. Uh, but I'm, I think I'm going to fail that one. Number 12. Whose feast. Does Eol attend when his wife and son leave for Gondolin? Whose feast does Eol attend? The elves, the dwarves, the Valar, the Elder. No idea. Whose feast? The, the elves, the dwarves, the Valar, the Elder. 
um, no idea. I'm going to just click something random and I'm going to say the valor, but I, I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to fail this one too. Number 13. What do the valor mourn the loss of at the beginning of char chapter um, 11 from Quenta Silmaril in the, the history of the Silmarils uh, of the Sun and Moon and the hiding of Valinor and the trees of Valinor, I guess? Fingal's death, Fingolfin's death, Fener's departure of the sun and the moon. I think it's that's the part where they talk about the, the the destruction of the trees of Valinor. So yeah, the trees of Valinor, I guess. Fourteen. Uh, what what is the name of Aredel and Eol's song? Nerdanel, Maegling, Sauron, Namo. Obviously. Not Sauron, Maegling. I think it was the wait. From Quenta Silmarillion, the history of the Silmarils, chapter 15 of the Noldor in Beleriand, and chapter 16 of Maegling. Okay, so it has to be Maegling. But I don't see the point of putting the answers in these, these small quotations with. Uh, with, uh, they, they are supposed to give you the context, but not the answer. So I'm guessing it's smuggling. I don't really remem remember that one. 15. What is the name of the dwarf that Turing seizes and holds from, for ransom? Eol, Mim, Namo, Ulmo. The name of the dwarf that Turing Seizes and holds from ransom. Turinturimbar of the thing. It's not Ulmo. It's not Eol because Eol is um. It's not Eol because Eol is um elf. So Namo doesn't sound familiar. I'm going to say Mim. I'm going to say Mim. Although Nam Namo sounds familiar, but Mim sounds a little bit even more familiar. Number 16. What do the elves begin calling Sauron after he creates the evil rings? White God, Dark Lord, Dark God, White Lord. Um, Dark Lord. Number 17. Who does are who does our Farazon marry against her will? From a Calabeth, the downfall of Numero. Indus Nienor Miriel Elwin. Hmm. It sounds familiar, but not enough to know. Against her way in this Nienor Miriel Elwin. I'm going to say Miriel, but I think I th I'm going to fail that one too. 18. What do the Valar create? To refortify Valinor after remembering Melkor's destruction of Almarin. Two passes, no entrances, entrances by water only, one pass. I'm pretty sure it has to be entrances by water only, but at the same time, I don't think it's that one either, because when the Numenorians try to invade by sea, they are not able to do so. No entrances? Hmm. Wompa, wompa. I'm going to say no entrances, but I don't really know. Number 19. What does Feanor do to the ships he uses to get to Middle-earth in Chapter 9? Burns them. Gives them away, sells them, sings them. Um, sing? No, it burns them. Yeah, so they can. Yeah, he burns them because that way they are not able to t change their minds and uh, go back. Yes. Um, number 20, only five left. Uh, number 20, who speaks out against Feanor's idea of he and his songs taking an oath to pursue anyone seeking the Silmarils, Melan, Fingolfin and Finarfin, Indis and Namo, Elendil, 
Ellen Dylan Turgon. I think it's Fingolfing and Finnerfin. Uh, they are the younger um, brothers of um, Fenor's brothers. I'm pretty sure they 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 spoke about um, against the oath. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go with that. Twenty one. Who in Middle Earth recognizes the Silmaril when others believe it to be a star? Who in Middle Earth recognizes the Silmaril when others believed it to be a star? Maedro, Cyrus, Tulkas, Ludmen. Tulkas is a Valar, so I don't think he... Cyrus doesn't sound familiar. Maedros, it's one of Feanor's songs. Who in Middle-earth recognizes the Silmaril when others believed it to be a star? No idea. But I'm going to go with Maedros because I don't think the others are re relate to that story. No idea. Number 22. What is the name of Melkor's young dragon that is defeated by Fingon? Uh, Ungoliant, Telperion, Glaurung, Gnoldor. Well, that, 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 this might be the easiest uh, question of all because Ungoliant is the um, giant spider. Telperion is one of the trees in Valinor. Noldor, it's a group of elves and it's Glaurum. Okay. 23. Who drives a knife into Glaurum's belly but it's killed by the monster? Sauron, Felagund, Azagal, Maeglin. It's not Sauron, obviously. Asagal doesn't sound familiar. Finrod Felagun. Maeglin. I didn't know. Is it. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. No. Might be. Asagal because if I rem. Yes. Glaurum gets killed in a um, um, battle where dwarves uh, take part in. So I'm going to say that uh, Asagal, and I'm pretty sure he was, uh, he gets killed by a dwarf. So obviously not Sauron, Maegling, it's one of Feanor's songs, I guess. And yeah, I'm going to say Asagal. Let's see what happens. Number 24. What do the dwarves create for the cinder after warning that evil creatures wander about the woods? Create for the cinder. Arms, ears, mouths, legs. What? What do the dwarves create for the cinder after warning that evil creatures wander about the woods? Arms, ears, mouths, and legs. I don't think I understand the... The Cinder are a group of elves, but... I, I don't think I remember this. Arms, ears, mouths, legs. Do they mean arms as in weapons or arms as in limbs? Ears, mouths, and legs. I'm going to say ears, because... But I don't absol I have zero idea what they are talking about. Let's say years. Twenty-five. Who warns Turgon of building Gondolin in the Hidden Vale? Mm. Feanor, Manwe, Tulkas, Ulmo. Who warns Turgon of building Gondolin in the Hidden Vale? I'm guessing that here. 
warns means something like a tip or a, um, um, like something positive, like a tip, like a, um, advice. So I think it was Ulmo. And let's see if they tell us the correct answers, not only the percentage. Great, my quest. Wait, what? This is what happens when you don't prepare your videos. I didn't know they were going to ask me for... Yeah, sorry, but I don't think we are getting the, the quiz results because I'm not going to register. Especially when they say here, connection not secure, you know. I think I'm going to find maybe another one so we can finish the video in a more positive and more professional note. Let's see what I can uh, find. Let's see. I have another two quizzes here. One from BuzzFeed Community and the other from... What's this? Um, fun Trivia? And we are going to start with um, this one. And the first question is, what is the name of the broken sword that cut the one ring from Sauron's finger? Glamdrin, Narsil, Sting, Longclaw. And it's Narsil. I was trying to think the name of the... Yeah, Narsil was the sword of Elendil, and when he was killed by Sauron, his son Isildur picked up the uh, blade and smote the one ring from the Dark Lord's finger. But I was trying to um, remember the name of the... Because Narsil breaks, and then they reforge it, and they gift it to Aragorn. And I'm not able to remember the name. Let's see. Anduril. That's it. It's Anduril. Narsil, uh, it, it's the original name, yes. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> second question. Uh, which of the four figures listed below is one of the Valar? Okay, th th this is very easy. Ulmo, Celebrimbor, or Celebrimbor, um, I'm, I'm never sure, Sauron, Ungolian. And it's Ulmo, which is this one, it's the, the like, some kind of the, uh, like, the Tolkien's version of Poseidon. Um, yes, uh, Ulmo is the Vala known as the King of the Sea, the Lord of the Waters, and the Dweller of the Deep. He is the second most powerful of the Valar, after, after his closest friend, Mangwe. How many wizards were sent to help the people of Middle-earth? Two, five, seven, or three? Most people, I think most people would have said three, because those are the ones that are most famous, which would be uh, uh, Radagast, Gandalf and Saruman, but it's five. There you go. There is Saruman the White, the traitor, Gandalf the Great, the badass, Radagast the Brown, the hippie, and the Blue Wizards. We don't actually know anything about them. And is that true? Because we know the original names and the names that um, they were given when they went to the uh, Middle Earth. And that's pretty much it. No one knows what happened to them. Next question. Um, who wields the sword Orchrist during the events in The Hobbit? Florin, Kili, Thorin, Gandalf. Uh, the Hobbit is my least favorite book, so I don't even remember the names of the. I guess it's got. No, is it Gandalf or is it, uh, is it Thorin? Yes. Its name means Goblin Cleaver, and the goblins themselves nicknamed it uh, Bitter, but uh, not Biter. 
It was found in a troll's cave and carried by Thorin during most of the events in The Hobbit. Who are the wizard's evil parallels? The Balrogs, the Dragons, the Nazgul, or the Mumakil? The Mumakil are the elephants. The, it's not the dragon, so it's not the Mumakils, which is the, like, the, that sort of really big um, mastodons or uh, elephants. Balrogs or Nazgul? I'm guessing it's the Balrogs, because both Balrogs and wizards, so the Istari, are Meyer, and the Nazgul are corrupted men, powerful, but I, I'm i going to say the Balrogs, although I guess it would make sense. Okay, yeah, the Balrogs were Meyer, of the same order as Gandalf and Saruman. Ah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Corrupted by the influence of Morgoth. Uh, they are beings of fire and shadow, and it cost Gandalf his life to kill one. The sword's thing would glow blue in the presence of what evil creatures? Giant spiders, Nazgul, dark elves, orcs. Has to be orcs. The elvish knife could only be considered a sword in the hands of the dim diminutive hobbits. Despite this, the blade was able to see two generations of filthy bagginses through countless perils. What age begins at the end of the events in the Lord of the Rings? Second age, third age, the fourth age, or the fifth age? What age begins? And it, it, it's the ending, it's the end of the third and the beginning of the fourth. Correct. This age begins after the last of the ring bearers, Frodo, Elrond, Galadriel, Gandalf and Bilbo, sail west to the Undying Lands. Who was the largest dragon ever to live? Glaurung, the father of dragons, Gothmog, captain of Angband, Smog the Golden and Calagon the Black. Glaurung, it's the first of the uh, dragons. Gothmog, it's the captain of the Balrogs, and and Smaug the Golden, it's a uh, Smaug, and it's Ancalagon the Black. There you go. Ancalagon the Black was the greatest dragon to ever live. His carcass was so enormous, it shattered a volcanic mountain rage range after it was slain by Arwen's grandfather. When the sword that was broken was reforged at Rivendell, what was the new name it was given? Well, luckily for us, I already looked that uh, on the internet. I already knew it, but um, Ecthelion, now that's a um, Noldor prince, Mithrodin, Orchrist, or Anduril. Mithrodin sounds familiar. But I don't remember what what it was, and it's Anduril. The remaking of Narsil into Anduril marks the return of the High King of Gondor and Arnor, namely Aragorn. Uh, there was a whole rhyme about it. Which of the three rings of power did Galadriel wear? Nadia, the ring of fire. Nenya, uh, the ring of water. Vilia, the ring of air. Okay, so, no, it's, mm, the Ring of Fire, it's given at the begin, at very beginning to um, Kirdan, sh the, the ship, right? And then Kirdan gives that um, uh, ring to Gandalf when he um, gets to Middle-earth. And the Ring of Air, which I think it, yeah, it, it was like, this was the red, the the crystal like the no color uh, like a diamond and then the blue ring and it was given to Gilgalad at the very beginning and then Gilgalad um, gives it to um, um, yeah it was Elrond yeah Elrond so it's uh, the ring of water 
Nenia, the Ring of Water, was given to Galadriel by its creator, Celebrimbor, and used to maintain her home of Lothlorien. Okay, so, uh, what is the name of the supreme deity that created the Ainur? Melkor, Mangwe, Eruiluvatar, God. It's not Melkor because that's um, Morgoth. It's not Mangwe because that's um, another Valar. It's not God, so it's uh, Eruiluvatar. He's big G God, the only one that can actually create life. While the Valar can create form, they cannot create function. That was a bad metaphor, whatever. What led, what led to the downfall of Numenor? Their invasion of the Andayan lands, their defiance of Sauron, an attack by Ancalagon the Black, the explosion of a volcano. Um, it's not a volcano. It's not Ancalagon the Black because he was already dead. that dragon was already dead when Numero fell. Um, their defiance of Sauron. Um, no, because Sauron was um, living there as a first as a prisoner and then as um, how do you say it? Um, he was the king's advisor, or and he corrupted the whole um, Numenorean um, society, and it has to be the first one. Yeah, um, correct. The king of Numenor, Arpharazon, afraid of dying, was convinced by Sauron to invade and take over the undying lands, Middle Earth's analog of heaven. The big G god wasn't too pleased about that, so he drowned the entire island and made the world circular so only elven ships were able to sail there. How many Valar were there originally? 13, 10, 20, 14. This question appeared on one of the quizzes that we made before. And I think that the answer was 14 plus Melkor, right? Or was it 13 plus Melkor? I don't think it's... It's not 10 because... Or maybe at the beginning was 10? Hmm. I think I'm going to fail this one because I don't know if it was 13 plus 1 or 14 plus 1. 13 maybe? Hmm. 14. Okay. Okay. 15 Ainur led the Ainun, Ainulindale, helping, helping to craft all of creation. However, Melkor turned away from his brothers and sisters to become the, lar the Dark Lord, while 14 other great spirits became, became the Valar. Let's see. Um, how did the Ainur create the world? Through dance, through song, with their hands, by mixing elements in a cauldron, and it's uh, music. It has to be music. Uh, the music of the Ainur was sung in three parts, each more beautiful and complex than the last. What was left at the end was uh, the entirety of creation. I think we're getting to the end. Um, um, what being inspired the concepts of change and discord leading to all the evil in creation? Gollum, Sauron, Morgoth or Ungoliant? It's Morgoth. Morgoth, known as Melkor before his fall, wove discord into creation. When did Beren's dagger Angrist break? Parring the sword of Gothmog, Lord of the Balrogs, prying a jewel from Morgoth's crown, trying to pierce Sauron's armor, after being stepped on by Glaurum, father of dragons, he didn't fight uh, Gothmog, he didn't fight Sauron, and he didn't, especially he didn't fight uh, Glaurum, so it's um, the second one. Morgoth had placed the Silmarils in his Sauron crown, and despite freeing the first one just fine, as the Dark Lord slumbered, his dagger broke trying to get the second. A shard pierced Morgoth's, Morgoth's cheek, awakening him. Next one, what race was the first to be awakened 
in Middle Earth. Ents, Ainur, Dwarfs, Elves. I know the term awakened regarding the elves, but at the same time it could have been the ants, I guess. But I'm, mm. yeah, now I'm going to say the elves. Wrong. It's so it's the dwarfs. The dwarfs were fashioned by the valor of, valor of craft, Aule. Yeah, the the, the smith. So. Technically, it's the elves too, because the big G god put them to sleep until after his children, the elves, woke up. I still think that I'm right, but let's go to the next one. Why did Mangwe task Olorin, Gandalf, with helping the people of Middle Earth? Um, because he was the strongest, because he was the most beloved, because he was the angriest, because he was afraid. I guess it has to be the second one. Because he was afraid. No way. Oh. Olorin is Gandalf's name in Valinor, yeah? And he's known as the wisest spirit. His counsel strengthens those around him and was crucial in defeating Sauron during the War of the Ring. His plans laid dec decades in advance and his assistance led to the Dark, Sloth Dark Lord's downfall because he was afraid. Okay, I guess it has some kind of meaning behind. Next one. When did the Sildur lose the One Ring? During the Battle of the Gladden Fields? After a drunken rebel, while trying to sneak through Moria, during a quarrel with the Wood Elves. Didn't he lose the ring when he got ambushed by, or was that only the movie? Drunken trying to sneak through Moria, they're in a quarrel with the... So, uh, Gladden Fields, I guess, it has to be, but the, the, the Gladden Fields wasn't... Yeah, oh, okay. The ring slipped in off Isildur's finger as he tried to swim across a river to escape a warband of orcs. Yeah, that was my, my understanding, yes. Despite the fact that the ring was doing a fair job of corrupting the man, it betrayed Isildur because he had decided to turn it over to the Council of Three, who would have destroyed it. Close call. Mm -hmm. Okay, last question on this one. Um, what were the names of the star-crossed lovers that Tolkien had engraved onto his and his wife's tombstone? Arwen and Arangorn, Romeo and Juliet, Gimli and Galadriel, Beren and Luthien, and it's it's Beren and Luthien. Seventeen out of twenty. You score better than seventy-four of all other quiz takers. <laughs> Stephen Colbert-esque. Your love of the works of Tolkien are so great, you crudely insert references into everyday conversation. Not real. No, I don't. Into everyday conversation, I don't. Uh, reading the Silmarillion is considered a slow afternoon for you. You have three rotating Halloween costumes, all Tolkien-based. No, I don't. Uh, you will never get over the fact that the Elvish language, languages Quenya and Sindarin weren't completed enough for conversation. But that hasn't stopped you from studying them est extensively. No. Yequenna ilambetele el dali. You truly are one of the greats. Although, I have to say, I don't forgive this one. I'm pretty sure it's elves. A man has to know how to lose. So, we are going to go to the next one. Conflicting Middle Earth Trivia Quiz. 20 questions, difficulty, difficulty tough. Average score, 12 out of 20. Okay, challenge, challenge accepted. Let's see. 
Although I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be much, much even, even, even harder. Um, uh, during the Valar's first struggle with Melkor, whose timely appearance tipped the scales in the veil, uh, Valar's favor, Orome Tulkas Mando Sulmo, the first struggle with Melkor. I'm guessing it's Tulkas because he was the champion. Orome was the um, the hunter. Oh, I'm going to say Tulkas. And um, again, we have to we have to wait until the end. What's the hint? Ah, uh, nah, nah, I, nah. I know, I'm not going to use them. Nah, I thought it was going to be like a context. Um, a hint like a small piece of text. Nah, no, no. I don't like that. No. Number two, during Melkor's second assault of on the Valar, he destroyed the two lamps of the Valar, Iluin and Ormal, as well as their first dwelling. Name this first island home of the Valar. Almaren, Almarian, Angrenost, and Dustar. No idea. And I know I said that I wasn't going to do the hint thing. Angrenost? Or Almarin? Mm. Ah, no, I only have three hints. Uh, well, I didn't need the first one. But, uh, too late. Question number three. The Valar assaulted Melkor in his fortress of Utumnu destroying it and dragging him back to Valinor to face three ages of imprisonment. What event motivated the Valar to do this? The awakening of the elves, the awakening of men, revenge of the destruction of their first home, Melkor, Melkor's destruction of the plants and animals of Middle-earth. I think I might need the the last hint because I don't. Rem I think that this happens. This fourth um, quote. It, it. I think it is true because if I remember correctly, something like this happens. What event motivated the Valar to do this? Hmm. The father. I don't remember. I have to say, the awakening of elves, the awakening of men. I don't think it's any. Uh, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to use the hint because no idea. Okay, so it's not. Mm, I would have said Melkor's destruction of the plants. Is it the awakening of men, or is it the awakening of elves? I'm going to say the awakening of elves because the, I think the men, uh, like humans, came um, much after. But yeah, I'm going to say the awakening of the elves. Question number four: Who or what saved Morgoth from the attacks of Ungoliant, Balrogs, Sauron, dragons, and werewolves? Yes, Ungoliant rebels and. Uh, against Morgoth, and I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any hints left. Um, I think it's Valrogs. Yeah, the Valrogs save him. Five. This event, more than any other, put Feanor beyond redemption in the eyes of the Valar. This first killing of elf by elf was known as the. Mm -mm, al at al what word what go what word goes in the blank this um slaying i think it's the slaying but i'm going i'm pretty sure i'm going to fail this one slaying at al -Qualonde? i don't remember also i read the silmarillion in spanish so i'm, I'm not really sure Question number six. How many battles of Beleriand were there? Note, the great battle at the end of the First Age, when the Valar finally overthrew Morgoth, is not 
counted as one of these battles. I think it's five. I'm pretty sure it's five, seven, four, five, six, or is it four? Maybe it's four. Uh, wait, I was the near night Arnoediat, um, Dagor Bragolag, um, and I think there were at least another two. So it's either four or five. I don't think it's six or seven. It's too much, too many. One, two, three. These exist. The glorious battle mm, doesn't sound familiar, but I don't know. So number seven. In which battle of Beleriand was Fëanor slain? The battle under under stars. The glorious battle. The battle of sudden flame. The battle of unnumbered tears. I don't remember. I'm a hundred percent going to. It's not the sudden flame. Maybe the unnumbered tears or the glorious battle. Yeah, I'm going to say the battle of unnumbered tears. But, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to fail that one too. Number eight. How many trolls did Hurin slay at defense of Sirich just before he was finally captured by Morgoth Morgoth's forces? Ninety-five, twenty-five, seventy, fifty. I am I'm going to say 25 because 95, 70 and 50 a, those are insane numbers but could be 50 I guess or could be any of those but I'm going to say 25 just in case um, it's the most reasonable I guess I'm going to fail this one too number 9 true or false Huang, Hound of Valinor actually fought Sauron in personal combat True or false, Huang? I don't think so. I think it's false. I think it's false. Why was the Dagor, Dagor Bragolag known as the Battle of Southern Flame? The Iron Mountains erupted in fire and flame. Morgoth rained fiery hail along his enemies. Fire breathing dragons first appeared during the, this battle. Morgoth sent destructive rivers in front of his army. It's the third one. But that that I'm I'm pretty sure it is the third one. Fire breathing dragons first appeared in this battle. I think that was the reason, yeah. Number eleven. Uh, who was responsible for the death of Thingol Grey Cloak? Dwarfs of the Blue Mountains, Balrogs of Morgoth, the Sons of Feanor, Easterlings of Fuldor the Ak the accursed. I don't know how Thingol died. Is it dwarves? Because I'm pretty sure that there was a fight between elves and between elves and and, and el um, elves and dwarves and some kind of um, elven. Uh, character got killed, like important character, Balrogs of Mordor. I, it doesn't, none of those things sound familiar. The Sons of Fëanor? Nah, I'm going to say the dwarves. But I don't know if, would, if it was him. Twelve. True or false? The Battle of Unnumbered Tears was originally an attempt by the elves and their allies to defeat Morgoth. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Although I guess you could count any of those battles as an attempt to defeat Morgoth, but... Um, number 13, which king of Númenor assembled a mighty fleet in an attempt to wrest control of Valinor from the Valar? Ar Gimil Gimilsor, Ar Farazon, Arisi Insiladun, Adunakor. And it's the, uh, it's the second one. Yeah, we saw it. Uh, we saw it before. It's the second one. The last one, uh, uh, as far as I know. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, but I think it's our far as on number 14. 
During the Battle of Fornost, the Witch King of Angmar was finally defeated and driven from the north, which future king of the Gondor led the forces of the Dúnedain on this assault, thereby earning the Witch, the witch King's hatred. Um, Ernil, Ernur, Excelion, Kirion. So it has to be a king of King of Gondor. No, Excelion it's an elf it's it was an elven prince. And I think he died before any of those things. I Kirion doesn't sound familiar, at least um I mean it does, but not as in Earnil, Learnur, yeah, those names are closer to um, um Yeah to the names that I know of um uh, Gondor character, so Earnil, Earnur, Earnil, I'm going to go with Earnil. Number 15, where was Anarion, younger son of Elendil and brother of Isildur, slain? Yeah, Elendil, Earnil, Earnur, Isildur, Earnil, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I mean, I'm, mm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be the correct answer, I don't know, let's see. So, where, um, uh, where was Anarion, younger son of Elendil, and brother of Isildur slain? In the downfall of Numenor, at the Battle of Dagorlad, at the Siege of Barad-dûr, at the Battle of the Gladden Fields. Anarion. I think it's the Siege of Barad-dûr, right before the, the that uh, last Battle of the Last Alliance. Yeah, I'm going to say that at the Siege of Barad-dûr. Number 16, the Battle of Azanul Bizar was the final battle in a war between which two races? Dwarfs and Orcs, Elves and Dwarfs, Elves and Orcs, Men and Orcs. It sounds... I, I guess it sounds like um, Dwarfish. Hmm. Is it Dwarfs and Orcs? Because I, I, I know that Elves and, and dwarves fought, but mm, yeah, I'm going to say dwarves and orcs. Although uh, I really don't know. The first battle of Dale is more commonly known as the Battle of. Is it five armies? But it, shouldn't it be the Battle of the Five Armies? Let's see. No, not Fiverr. Five. Five armies. Yeah, it's the, the the only thing that comes to mind. Number 18. In which battle did the horse lords of Eotheot aid Gondor and received the lands of Rohan in gratitude? Battle of the Greenfields, Battle of the Camp, Battle of the Field of Celebrant, Battle of the Crossings of Erwi. Absolutely no idea. I'm going to say the first one, the Field of Celebrant, the Crusades of... Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say the first one, but I'm, 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 I think I'm going to fail that one. Number 19. The Great Battle and the Battle of Dagorlad were the greatest battles fought in the First and Second Ages, respectively. What was the greatest battle of the Third Age? Battle of Helm's Deep. Battle of the Pelennor Fields, Battle of the Gladden Fields, Battle of Nanduirium. Um, well, well, I'm guessing it's the Pelennor Fields. Like the, yeah, no, it has to be the second one, yeah. The final battle fought in the War of the Ring was the, the Battle of... No idea. And the world there was Battle of um I would have said something like the Battle of um of the Black Um uh, Doors because wasn't that the wasn't that the, the name of the last battle? Well um Battle of and it's one just one word Battle of is it is it Battle of Mordor? Not, but it cannot be. 
Battle of Mordor, nah. Well, I'm going to put Mordor anyway because I'm going to fail, so what's the point? Um, submit my answers. Let's uh, let's see what happens. It was Almaring, no, no, Almaring not Angrenost. The Awakening of the Elves, yeah, the Balrogs, the Slaying King Slaying. Yeah, because it was like, yeah, between elves, uh, again, elf by elf, yes. The correct answer was five. The first battle, which was not named, Dagor Nuin Giliath, the battle under stars, Dagor Aglarev, the glorious battle, uh, Dagor Bragolag, the battle of the southern flame, and Nirnaeth Arnoedia, the battle of unnumbered tears. Well, whoa. No, I failed many more than I thought. Than I thought I was going to fail. The correct answer was the Battle of Understars. Fair. How many trolls did? Oh, so the correct answer was seventy. Okay. Who and Hound of Valinor actually fought Sauron in personal combat? It was correct. Yeah. When Beren was captured by Sauron and imprisoned in the pits of Tolin, Gaurhoth, Luthien and Huan came to his rescue. Sauron emerged in the shape of a great werewolf to confront them. After falling victim to one of Luthien's enchantments, Huan captured Sauron and would, would not let go, even though Sauron struggled mightily and shapeshifted into different forms. Finally, Sauron surrendered the tower to Luthien and Huan uh, released him. I remember the, the, the like the Hound of Valinor fighting a werewolf, werewolf but I don't re I didn't remember was that it was Sauron. I have failed lots of them. Why was the Dagor Bragolag known as the Battle of Southern Flame? Oh, Morgoth sent destructive rivers in f of fire in front of his armies. No kidding. I didn't I thought it was the dragons. Yeah, okay, so Thingol got killed by dwarves, yes. The Battle of Unnumbered Tears was originally an attempt by the elves and the ar their allies to defeat Morgoth. Okay, so Maedros held the song of Feanor began began marshalling his forces and devised a plan where the elves and the Edain, um the first humans I think it was would forever crush Morgoth's forces. However, many of the men under command of the song, Sons of Fëanor, were sec secretly in league with Morgoth. And at a crucial point in the battle, they turned onto the Noldor. Instead of victory, the elves and Edain were thoroughly defeated and were never able to cha challenge Morgoth's might again. Yeah, Farazon, yeah. Which future king of Gondor led the forces of the Dunedain on this assault, thereby earning the witch king's hatred? Earnil, it was an Earnil. Oh, no, wait, no, it was an Earnil. It was, in fact, Earnil. Well, I got that one correct. Another one correct, dwarfs and orcs, yeah. Another one correct, five armies, okay. It wasn't the Battle of Greenfields, but it was um, in which battle did the horse lords of Eotheod at Gondoran received the lands of Rohan in gratitude? Battle of the Field of Celebrant. When an invading force of Val Valchoth crossed into Calenardon at the time of, province of a province of Gondor, ruling steward Kirion sent a request for aid to the men of Eotheod, a region near the northwestern edge of Mirkwood and dispatched his northern army to intercept the enemy. The Valchoth proved stronger than anticipated, however, and were aided aid by orcs by, from the mountains. The army of Gondor soon found itself cut off and on the verge of annihilation at that moment, Earl the Young led his horsemen onto the battlefield and they, and they broke upon the back and flanks of the enemy and routed them. In gratitude, Kirion gave the lands of Calenardon to the horsemen who renamed it 
Reader, uh, Reader Mark, afterwards called it uh, called Rohan in Gondor. Okay, um, the greatest battle of the Third Age was the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, yeah. The final battle fought in the War of the Ring was the Battle of Bywater. Mm. This battle was fought in the Shire upon the return of Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin. They found things much changed since they had left, most notably the presence of a great deal of men led by one named Sharky. In the Battle of Bywater, a large group of hobbits led by Merry and Pippin surrounded about 200 of these men in the town of Bywater. After ignoring Merry's orders to surrender, the men tried to break out of the ring of hobbits. Several hobbits were killed while most of the men were cut down by archers. Merry himself slew their leader. When the hobbits then pressed on the back end, they found that Sharky was none other than Saruman. Okay, yeah. Now I remember. But I, yeah, by water, I don't even remember what's the translation in Spanish, but intent of raking uh, as much mischief as possible in the Shire. Um, after being told to leave by Frodo, Saruman was murdered by Grim and Warm Tongue, and with this passing, an end came to the War of the Ring. Only 24% of players have answered correctly this one. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't even think of it, yeah. So, 10 of out of 20, only 10 out of 20, so I'm below the average score. No, no. No, 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 no. Well, yes, but I don't like it. 10 out of 20. Okay, well, that's it for today, I guess. Um, this is the last one. I, I really hope that you, I hope that you got more um, points than me, more correct answers than me because uh, especially in this one this one was really bad so that's it tell me if you feel like it tell me in the comment section if you like the video and also you could recommend me uh, more quizzes like this or any other um doesn't have to be talking but any other thing and thanks for clicking